Afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, Simon Brown here. So today we, I want to look at creating what I call fundamental charts using Excel. Uh, I, I, I've used them a fair bunch on my uh, TV show on Summit. I use them a, a fair bunch in some of the other webinars. Keith McLachlan has used them as well. And the question I've been getting asked a fair bunch as well, okay, they look lovely. How do we do them? Uh, and I thought, well, okay, let, let's run through it and, and do it. I'm going to do relatively live, which means uh, we might run into some problems. Things might not always work as they planned. Excel often gives me uh, massive frustrations. We'll see how that goes. I've kind of pre-prepared a few just in case we run into some problems. Um, but before we do, quickly, what are we doing? Important, I'm using Excel 2007. Uh, I appreciate you might have the 2010 or 2013 or perhaps an older version. Uh, that being the case, there certainly shouldn't be significant changes. You, some of your ribbon buttons might be a little bit different. But I had a quick look at uh, 2010 earlier this morning and everything seemed to be exactly the same. Predominantly, I use it for long-term PE, dividend yield, and net asset value charts. In truth, I think we could probably use it for a lot more. Uh, I've, I've used it for, for margins, operating margins, and this week's show that you'll find on Summit. So you can use it for almost anything. And whilst we can eyeball a chart and get a sense of it, what I'm really looking for is, is this gives me a much better picture of it, and I like to put the averages in. That's always important. So I like to put the average and then the standard deviation at the same time so that I can see where we are from the average in that sense. So let's uh, first get some data. This is uh, my, uh, the famous brands page within online share trading, the quote page. Uh, your broker should be able to provide you with the data uh, regardless of who you broke with. They all get their data from the same place, so it's all pretty much the same. In this case, obviously, as I said, so I'm in the, the, the standard online share trading page for famous brands. I click on price history and it will take me through to that page there and there it is. I'm going to do some pauses here as well because I'm watching to make sure that you guys are seeing what I'm seeing and there's sometimes a bit of a delay sending the data. So if I'm pausing, I'm waiting for the images to catch up with everyone on the, on the webcast. This then gives us obviously date, uh, closing high, low, open, number of deals, the value traded, the percentage move, the dividend yield, earning yield, and price earnings. You'll see that the DY, EY, and PE are zero. That's because it's for today. They will go to closing date. But what I really care about, I can cut and paste this and drop it into Excel. I'm going to do it much easier. What I'm going to do is click the Save to Excel button, and that will then download this data into my PC. It goes back all the way, and there it is here already. Let's move that across into my main screen. So there's the data we just saw from the, uh, the website. I've now pulled it in to, to uh, uh, Excel. I delete that top line. It's today's data, but I haven't got a, a, a DYEYPE, so I delete that, get it out the way. We can see that the data goes back to November 1994, uh, 9 November and I'm guessing that is their listing date. I'm going to delete that day as well because you can see I've got a no value and no value down there. Uh, question coming through. Can you ask questions as I go? Absolutely. If you've got any questions, uh, throw them in as we come in. I'll take those questions as we go. Now, first thing, we've got too much data here. We've got more than I need. I, 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 you might need some of it, but what I'm looking to do here, I'm saying, okay, well, let's do a chart of the price earnings ratio. So what do I need? I need date, and I need price earnings ratio. Easy enough. Grab those couple of buttons at the top, right click, and delete. Bingo. Now I've just got date and price earnings. The next thing I want to do, and I do it just to keep it cleaner, is I select my price earnings column, and I go to format sales and I'm going to make it only to one decimal point. I don't need it to as many decimal points as we're seeing. So I drop that down to only one decimal point, and presto, it's looking a heck lot cleaner in that sense. The next problem I can, I can tell you, and we'll, we'll get away from it straight away, is that if I chart this, what happens? This data at the top is on the left-hand side of the chart, and the data at the bottom is on the right-hand side of the chart. In other words, it's the wrong way around. I need to invert this data. Uh, 
there's ways to do it that are simple. I got a fairly uh, a trick for it. I put a one in there. I add up. Uh, hold on, let's try that again. Is equal to that plus one gives me two. And what I'm doing is just putting a, a length of data down on the side. Now I know that there is some way that I can just say to Excel, please invert this data. If I could find it, I would do it. I used to do it on my old Excel, and then I got the new one, and I, I just can't find it, and it, it drives me absolutely dilly. So to make my life easier, I say, well, okay, I just in essence cheat this way here. So there I take it down to the end of the, ah, and I thought that was happening. I want to drag that down. There I go. Uh, Christo is saying sort by date. Yes, the problem is is that it's not recognizing it as date. It, it's not in, in, in date format. So we can't do sort by date. We can't do oldest to newest because although it is showing it to me as date, it's not in a date format that Excel recognizes. I'll show you that in a sec. Let me just quickly drag all of this down. And that's the problem. And we've come up on this problem before sometimes where the format of the data is simply not it looks one way, but it's not actually presenting itself in a way Excel gets it. What I've essentially done is just put a countdown on that A column for me, from 1 to 4,843. Now I sort by that. Uh, Christo, if I go and say to it, uh, please to format, please to make it a date for me uh, that I like, it comes back and you can see it's just it's, it's giving me weird stuff and it's because of the date format as opposed to America. So what I simply now do, is I've, I've run that down and I take all of that. Now I go to data, I go to sort, I say sort column A and I say go from largest to smallest and now I've turned it around. I've hacked it. Make no bones, it's a hack. Uh, there's definitely a smarter way of doing that. Now I can delete that column, and now I'm broadly in business. So what I want to do, I want to chart the price earnings. So I get all my data for price earnings, nice and simple, there it is. I go to insert, I go to line chart, 2D chart, presto, there it sits. Nice and simple chart. But that, well, I suppose it actually does. I'm going to delete some of the information there. I haven't got my dates on there, that's fine. I've got a chart of the famous brand's uh, price earnings ratio from 10 November 94 to yesterday, which was 4 June 2013, and that looks perfectly nice. But I want to add my average and my standard deviation. So I want to add average price earnings, and then I want to add average, what I call minus, and average plus. So how do I get average? Well, I click in there, I go to formula, I go to more functions, statistical, average. And then it says, well, average of what? Well, of row B, so we select everything in row B, presto, average PE, 12.8. So over the entire period that we're looking at, we've got an average price earnings of 12.8. Cool. What's our standard deviation? Now we need to work out what the standard deviation is, then I'll add and subtract it. So my standard deviation, again, more functions, statistical, av deviation, which data set we're looking at. Again, I'm looking at the price earnings data. Presto, my average deviation, 4.9, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to call it 4.9. Now what I have to do, I can't just drag that down the column because it will shift what it's looking at. So what I say to it is, okay, very cool, it's 4.9, so I want 4.9 above 12.8 and 4.9 below 12.8 for my average plus and average minus. So average minus will equal 12.8 minus 4.9 gives me 7.9. Let me just move that out the way. My average plus will give me 12.8 plus 4.9, so my average high is 17.7. Now what I plan to do is just basically drag that across the whole set of the data again. So I've quickly created those, those three levels, uh, dragging it down so that I can get it into the chart. 
and it did what it did it to me last time and I have no idea why it's doing that. 12.8 is fine and then you'll notice suddenly at some point it starts giving me a different, but uh, I know why because I'm still running average. I need to hard code the 12.8 and hard write it rather than soft write it. And then I drag that down. The dragging is painful. I mean, this is not a, a quick process, but it's also, and I'm going to show you a, another way which I do it, which makes life a heck lot easier in many senses. There we go. Back to the top. So now we've got an average price earnings for the entire period, a low average and a high average. I want to include them on the chart. So I click the edge of the chart, and you can see that little blue box there. All I do is drag it across. Presto. There's my price earnings chart. It's telling me the blue line that waves all around. Let's make this bigger so everyone can see it nice and easy. The blue line that's waving all around is showing me the actual price earnings. And then I've got my three horizontal lines. My red one is my average, average low, average high. In essence, there's a, what can we see? Immediately, what can we see? Okay, the price earnings is right out there. This is a crazy massive price earnings at the moment. And we could do that on dividend yield. We could do it on net asset value. The immediate thing that strikes me, and this is, okay, this is lacquer, but I've got almost 20 years of data, almost 19, 18 and a half years of data here. And surely there's been fairly fun. I mean, can we really look at famous brands 18 years ago and compare it to famous brands today, for example? The short answer is, well, no. So I would probably only do this over a 10-year period at max. The other thing which I'm getting, and it's not a major crisis, but what have I got? I've got a blue line which is bouncing all over the place. And it's not so bad if I've only got price earnings. But let's say I also wanted to put a dividend yield on here and a, a price to net asset value on here. I would have to be on, 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 on separate uh, 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 axes. That's fine but then suddenly it gets a bit messy. So then I say, well, can't we go and get data and do less frequent data? The short answer is yes. So let's go back to the famous brand page. And again, although I'm sitting in standard online share trading, you should be able to find this in, in your broker's page as well. Um, I'm going to company profile, and I'm going to click down at the bottom here, ratio analysis. What I'm looking for is in the ratio analysis, they give me price earnings for every period. So they give it to me for every 12 months. So I then, and I have to go and do this by hand, but nonetheless, I can go and grab the data for every 12 month period. I could, if I wanted, go and get interim and final, which would give me a little more data in a sense. And then I can go and get the earlier ratios as well. So let's go to final only. I can go and get earlier ratios at the same time. And I then paste those in, and I did that earlier in the day, so there is my chart there. What I went and did, and let's, uh, for the immediate focus on those two columns, so what, 2000 to 2013, I went and got the price earnings for each one of those particular years, and I said, brilliant, we got the price earnings. As I said, had to do it by hand, and then got my average, my low and my high, using the same methodology as I used earlier. And I pull my chart in, and I've got a much cleaner chart, significantly cleaner chart. Now, why is that important? Well, because maybe I also want to bring in price to nav. Now, price to nav is the lower blue line, the lighter blue line down there at the bottom. Okay, so now I can get two in there, and they're nice and clean. So let's play with this chart a bit. I still think... Tell you what, let's actually drop the amount of data we're doing. Let's only take 10 years of data. So we'll take from 2004. But immediately I do that, there's a problem because my average was worked out on the full amount of data. So I need to go and delete all of that. Uh, and from 2004, I need to go more function, statistical, average. And I need to say, give me all of that for my average. What am I going to do? I'm going to put dollar signs in front so that as I move it, if you put a dollar sign, it freezes the, and therefore my average is 13.7. 
slightly different average because I'm looking at a different period. What is my deviation? Call it 3.4. So my low is that minus 3.4. Uh, hold on, 3.4. And my high is 13.7 plus 3.4. Take those two numbers, drag them down. Let's go back to the chart. Let's take the nav out for now. There we've got a 10-year chart, much cleaner, broadly telling us the same story. What I want to quickly do is make these horizontal lines the same color because I want to add more data onto it. So I go down, I right-click it, Format Data Series, and it popped up on the other screen. Uh, line color, solid. Let's make them red. That's the same color. Let's go and make that one. Line color, solid, red. I'm going to delete these. We don't need that. So there's my middle high low. Then let's go pull a net asset value. Again, let's not worry about those values there. I'm now going to go and have to draw those. Someone's asking where did I get the net asset value? Good question. If I go back to my broker page, down at the bottom there, net asset value. Price to net asset value, rather. So <clears throat> I can get net asset value up at the top up here. And then what I do down at the bottom, it gives me price to net asset value. Uh, what do I need to do? I need to go and get my average. And I want it on that range there. And I want to put my dollar signs in so that it doesn't shift. Pull that down. I'm going to make it to only one decimal place. Standard deviation of that data there. My deviation is 1.2. So that is equal to that minus 1.2. And that is equal to plus 1.2. and I pull those down. And I want to include that into my data chart. So I take the blue, drag it across. Now what I've got a whole bunch sitting down at the bottom down there, uh, which is fine, I suppose. Let's change those lines. Line color, solid. Let's make it a, let's make it a bright green. What we, without a shadow of a doubt, seeing is that, uh, and this is very, very simple methodology. Let's not kid ourselves that we're doing rocket science here. But in these fairly simple methodologies, we can see that famous brands is above its highs. What I want to be buying is below the lows. So I would have wanted to be buying in that period there, maybe that period back there, but that's you know, too far back in the past. And, of course, we don't have... Uh, 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 time machines to go back. Key point is what we can see in the current price nav and current price earnings ratio, we are looking at fairly significant high levels. What we could also do is take this there, the, the nav, and put it on its own axis. This, this chart actually works okay, but I can put it on what we call a secondary axis. What it's not doing, I need to do it with those three little lines as well. That actually doesn't help me. It gives me a less clear picture, so I'm going to leave it as it was. What we can do to clean up the charts is say, well, let's do them separately. In other words, let's pull out and only focus on, again, we slide that across, and we get a net asset value. What you can then do with that chart, if you want to make it look, or, or you, you want to save it as a JPEG or something, um, that's plenty easy. You click on the chart, you right-click, you copy, <coughs> excuse me, go to paint, paste it, you can cut it and save it, and then you've got it in a, in a JPEG at the same time. So the process in itself, I mean, once you've got the raw data, fairly simple. Uh, someone's saying, could I do two standard deviations? You could. You could do as many standard deviations as you like. I mean, in truth, um, I don't know <clears throat> Excuse me, if that really adds significant value to it, what we're looking for. I mean, it's currently 
more than two standard deviations away, and it has perhaps way back gone more than one standard deviation below the process. Um, I stick with one standard deviation. I'm typically, the numbers that I most care about, I'm going to be uh, sticking in my price earnings, my dividend yield, my net asset value or net asset value to price is my preferred. Um, I will probably start to pull in. As I said, I want to look at the numbers. And whilst I can look at the numbers on a balance sheet and I can go back to this page within the online, within my stockbroker and, 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 and uh, get all the ratios, you know, let's say we're looking at debt to equity, and there's my debt to equity numbers there. Okay, I can see that, and I can see that debt to equity is at the low period for, for this, uh, uh, what are we looking at, uh, six years worth of data. I get that. Um, I like to chart it. I like to stick it in so that I can see a, a good picture of it. That, that to me is always going to be my preferred way to, to, to really get the data, understand it, use it, uh, manipulate it and the like and ultimately end up with a, a, a picture. And whether it be, the, as I said, the more that one there, which is a much noisier picture, um, or whether I go for a, a cleaner, uh, wrong button, that one there. I typically prefer the cleaner one these days. It's broadly, it's, it's telling you the same thing in essence. I mean, in this case, it's telling you, you know, the, 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 the price to net asset value and the uh, price earnings ratio are both at record highs. Makes sense. The stock in the high 90s is at record highs. When I did something, and in fact, let me pull up one I did for this week's show. Uh, there it is there, where I looked at the margins of different companies. So this is, let's go to that one there. This is Famous Brands Operating and uh, Net Margin. So I've got to pull it onto my other screen just to make it fit. So what I did here was I took, again, this is a famous brand. This is the blue line is the operating margin. The green line is the net margin. Um, I, do, I do both of them, and I'll touch on it in a moment why. What you can see is there was this window back here sort of for a number of years up until about 2003 and 4, margin significantly improved. They've kind of been flatlining, although with a slight bias up. Net margin being improving. What's the difference between those two margins? Your net margin, and your operating margin includes all the costs of doing the business, net mar but it excludes interest and tax. What you can see is that gap has widened in 2013 from where it was back in 2002. And that widening, I suspect, is because they're paying more interest and they've got more debt and perhaps they're also paying a higher tax rate. Um, we look at that there, and then I also did the one for... Uh, spur for a comparison, so I need to take them onto my second screen just to minimize them so I can see them. Here's the spur one. What you can see here, quite volatile. And in fact, what I then did was I put them together. Is this going to fit? Ah, it's not going to fit. I didn't think so. So then I put Spur and Famous Brands together. Which one are we looking at here? Uh, we're looking at uh, op, uh, which margin are we looking at here? I, to be honest, can't remember. Let me pull that down. Operating margins, I suspect. No, this can't be. This must be gross margin. Spur runs at a much higher margin. A couple of points in Spur. You can see the missing part at the beginning, the missing part at the end. That's because they haven't yet gained the 2013 full-year results and they weren't listed in the late part of the 1990s. So that data is missing. We can see Spur runs at a much higher margin, which is quite attractive. What we can also see is just crazy volatility in that margin. I much prefer the smoothed increases from famous brands. That volatility, red, for me, it's a red flag. I would want to go and dig around and say, okay, why have I got this volatility? Where did it come from? What's caused it? Uh, you know, what's, the, what's the point of it? Why did we get that crazy spike in 2007 and crash down? It's obviously a reason for it. And that crazy spike wasn't a one-off. It was increasing from the low of 02 up to 07, then in a year crashed down, and now it's kind of leveling off. What caused that? That was what would interest me, and I'd want to go back and understand some more about that and get some sense of that. So ladies and gents, uh, that's it. We're bumping up against time. It was just a, a fairly quick look at, at how it works and how I put it together. Um, certainly fairly simple. 
as I said, I was using XR07. Uh, if you've got any questions, you're welcome to drop some in now. If you uh, have uh, uh, questions down the line, you're welcome to drop me an email. Uh, Excel is one of those things. Thanks, Christo. Excel is one of those things that when it does best, it can make you go crazy. Um, you would notice my dates were wrong on those. And I was this morning when I was putting this together, I couldn't make it give me the dates. I don't know why. It just drove me absolutely crazy. Um, a question coming through from Simpi where he says, you know, what can you use it for? And the answer is absolutely anything that you want to turn numbers in. And I'll come back to this page. Um, you know, we've got so many different numbers here. And I like to look at those trends. I like, to, I like things visual. And I want to see the trend. And I want to see a long-term trend. And I want to get what the average is. So pretty much any number that you care about. And I mean, down here, we've got um, sales per share cent. We've got uh, uh, price per sales per share. Um, we've got liquidity percentages. We've got peg ratios. You know, we've got any of these that you look at and you think, okay, this is a number that I care about. Uh, I want to know more, a little bit more about it. Well, presto, here you can come and find it, get the data, and then you can go and draw yourself a chart. Now, to me, I think it's absolutely invaluable. Ladies and gents, there it is, uh, bumping up, as I said, against the time. We'll leave it there, uh, bringing it in just under 30 minutes. Uh, thanks very much for your time today. I hope you take something away from it. It is simple. As I said, Excel can make you go crazy. Uh, download the video. It will be on the website shortly, and then use it for a reference. All the best. Cheers.